President Biden will hold his first cabinet meeting today, which will be used to promote his massive infrastructure plans. The $2 trillion proposal was unveiled yesterday. It includes more than $600 billion in new roads, billions more to revamp the nation's electrical grids, expand internet access, and rebuild aging schools and hospitals. In his speech from Pittsburgh, the president called the plan big and bold, but said it's overdue and will put Americans to work. For more now, let's bring in CBS News Senior White House and political uh, correspondent Ed O'Keefe. So, Ed, let us talk about this massive plan. The plan faces some significant political blowback. What's the reaction from both sides of the aisle? Well, predictably, Republicans don't like the talk of tax increases. In this case, specifically, it would be a corporate tax increase taking the rate from 21 to 28 percent, plus some taxing on multinational companies that have interests overseas. Uh, Republicans universally opposed to this, saying it would be a job killer, not necessarily a job creator. Even President, former President Trump weighing in, saying that this would undo economic gains that had been made before the pandemic. Uh, and Republicans say, look, they're willing to talk to the president about this because, in theory, they like the idea of addressing the nation's urgent infrastructure needs, but not necessarily doing it with tax increases. The president turns around and says, I am open to any idea and how you would pay for this so long as it doesn't tax any individual who makes less than $400,000 a year. Uh, so, Ed, let's talk about the president's first cabinet meeting uh, happening today. Um, what will be different, I guess, um, with this meeting amid the pandemic? Uh, and what are you hearing uh, the president plans to focus on? Well, uh, the focus obviously will be on his new American jobs plan and how these folks can help sell it to a skeptical American public and certainly to an even more skeptical Congress. Uh, not easy these days to find a table for 25. And so the White House has moved the cabinet meeting out of the cabinet room into the White House East Room, which is the big room that he held his news conference in last week. Uh, ones where they hold uh, various events and parties. Uh, they will be spaced out at a social distance. Uh, the Biden cabinet counts 25 individuals, himself, the vice president, the chief of staff, the budget director, and then about 21 other uh, folks who uh, serve and lead these various departments and agencies. They've all been confirmed at this point. For a cabinet that was taking a while to get confirmed, it ultimately got confirmed faster uh, than uh, previous cabinets from uh, President Obama and President Trump. So uh, they're happy to have them all now in place, and they will all be here later today. And uh, we'll see if any of them talk to us afterward. So we've also learned that uh, the First Lady, Jill Biden, is actually, Dr. Jill Biden, is actually going to be returning to teaching. This is the first time a First Lady in history has continued to hold down a full-time job outside of the East Wing. Was that difficult for the White House to approve? Because, you know, now there's this whole Secret Service thing and a lot of other stuff that goes into uh, going to work for her. Right. Well, our colleague Bo Erickson had a hunch about this because he covered the Biden campaign and he... Uh, did some digging because as a Virginia State employee, as a, as a professor at Northern Virginia Community College, her emails were subject to the Freedom of Information Act. And so they were able to, uh, he was able to get her, his hands on uh, email communications between Dr. Biden, the school, and some White House officials regarding this because, yes, we've never had a First Lady collect a paycheck uh, doing her own day job perfectly within her right to do so, but there were some concerns as they were preparing for this about whether she would be violating the emoluments clause of the Constitution, because there is language in there about whether or not uh, a president or his family can be accepting money essentially from a state, and as a state employee, she would be doing that. So they had to set up a special arrangement where she'd get paid through a foundation. There were concerns about uh, whether she'd be able to go teach in person. The college remains uh, in a virtual learning uh, set up so she's been teaching virtually from here at the White House or from Delaware when she's there uh, and has made clear to her colleagues that she wants them to address her as Dr. Biden, not to make any mention of the fact that she's First Lady. And there were even concerns, according to these emails, about how she would be identified on the syllabus because, you know, do you put Biden right there and potentially uh, draw a, a larger crowd? Do you not include her name at all and potentially not get enough students? They ultimately set it on Jill T. Biden. Uh, for her middle initial. And, um, you know, we'll see how this goes. But it's a, a, an interesting look, and you can read it at cbsnews.com, into what it took to set up this arrangement. She taught at the same community college when she was second lady, so there is some precedence and familiarity for this uh, with her and with the White House. And, um, you know, uh, obviously, like so many other teachers, has had to adjust to the way it's being done these days in a virtual setting. 
All right, Ed O'Keefe for us at the White House. Ed, thank you so much. Take care.